Good evening. Or, or maybe afternoon or, or morning, uh, depending on when you watch this. Uh, oh, uh, I am Be Normal, your ever faithful spooky host of all things creepy, scary, and gloomy. And most importantly, a great admirer and reluctant housemate to the ever spooky and ever ghostly Vincent Price. And for our friends watching from home who are still somewhat unaware of the wonderful work that was bestowed upon us by the stylishly bestial visage of Vincent Price, allow me to introduce you to some of his movies. Not a top ten, mind you. Perhaps more of a road map to guide you to where I recommend you should start. Besides, Vincent Price has been in more works than you could shake a candelabra at. So I'll leave it to you to decide his best performances for yourself once you have seen a decent chunk of his work. So without further ado, friends and enemies and all ghosts and ghouls in between, may I present the Vincent Price Starter Pack, a.k.a. 10 Essential Films to Get You Going. House on Haunted Hill is a movie you have no excuse not to watch. Well, because it's literally in the public domain. Frederick Lauren is throwing a party for his wife in a haunted house, which resides on a probably haunted hill. With each guest promised a yummy cash prize of $10,000 if they survive the night. <laughs> I think everyone wonders what they would do if they saw a ghost. The movie plays on the old dark house trope, where spooky events and eerie encounters within the architectural bowels traumatize the guests, sending them into madness and hysteria. The movie is creepy and atmospheric with phenomenal use of light, shadow, sound, and, well, it is one of William Castle and Vincent Price's best works for a damn good reason. Plus, it has a skeleton. Spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Ah! House of Wax, the strangely and darkly melodramatic tale of vengeance and tragedy. Price plays the role of a talented sculptor, Professor Henry Jarrett, who runs a wax museum of historical figures he has lovingly created. Forgive me, my dear, for discussing your intimate secrets. But when his business partner burns down his beloved museum, the professor returns with the curation of history's worst moments in order to scar and horrify his public audience. Kemner killed without mercy, and 2,000 volts sent him to a higher court. And not only that, a mysterious scarred figure appears to be going around the city, committing murders in the dead of night. All whilst Professor Jared's wax display grows ever more popular and ever more realistic. I just don't understand how it can seem so real. That's the finest compliment I've ever received. <laughs> Now, Roger Corman and Vincent Price could be said with thick as thieves, and together the two of them created a variety of movies inspired by the works of Edgar Allan Poe. Extraordinary genius that is Edgar Allan Poe. I still think he's probably the greatest American writer. Which are commonly referred to as the Corman-Poe cycle of films. And among these films lie one of my all-time favorites, The Pit and the Pendulum. A gothic tale of mystery, death, madness, and maybe even ghosts. Okay, just maybe, I can't really say that would be spoilers. Price plays the role of Nicholas Medina, mourning the death of his wife in a spooky Spanish castle. A castle which boasts quite the torturous dungeon within its bowels. 
And thus, Nicholas must contend with investigation, accusation, and betrayal as he deals with the ghosts of his past within the confines of these familial hallowed halls. <coughs> now for something a little more light-hearted, shall we say. Within the world of Disney, there lies an adaptation of the adventures of Sherlock Holmes, known as The Great Mouse Detective, starring Basil of Baker Street. Basil of Baker Street, my good fellow. What the hell is even that? The story of a couple of mice who must save all of British mousedom, as their queen is in danger from the evil lord of rodent whimsy, Rattigan. Voiced by Price himself. Oh, a marvelous performance. <laughs> the hero, isn't he? But a villain is always somebody that has to fool you all the time. He has many more facets to his character, many more sides to his humor. He has to be charming and witty and decadent and funny and, you know, everything going on at the same time. He's much more fun to play. Price plays the role with evil glee and a whimsical malevolence, bringing a level of sophistication to the movie that very few actors would have been able to achieve. So many ingenious ideas, I didn't know which to choose. So I decided to use them all. Plus, he even performs two songs in the movie. From the brain that brought you the big Ben Caper, the head that made headlines in every newspaper. Picture a post-apocalyptic world where zombie-like vampires roam the streets and one man, one scientist, one cool dude with a pencil mustache tries their damnedest to stay sane all while taking it day by day in a never-ending quest to slay all vampires. They're perfect. Just wide enough to keep the flesh apart so their body seal can't function. And how many more of these will I have to make before they're all destroyed? Price plays the part of Dr. Robert Morgan, probably the loneliest man on Earth, seeing as, well, he's the last man on Earth. The story has themes of love, loss, determination, and the never-ending drudgery of being alone in a world that wants to kill you. Theatre of Blood, the campiest of camp, the goofiest of goofs, and the priciest of price. I'll kill you when I am ready. Next week, next month, perhaps next year. Every moment Price is on screen, it seems as if he is having more fun than should be allowed. Hello, I'm Butch. Price plays the part of a Shakespearean stage actor, Edward Lionheart, who is out for revenge regarding his critics, who he knocks off one by one in comical Shakespearean ways. It was a pound exactly, was it not? A pound, no more, no less. This is two ounces over. Theatre of Blood is one that will have you in stitches with laughter. Or, well, will have you in stitches if you don't laugh. Now, I really don't want to litter this list with too many Corman pictures, but I am making an exception here for The Raven. Mostly because it has pretty much nothing to do with Edgar Allan Poe. Oh wow, it has a raven in it, for a little bit. Oh wow, it has someone called Lenore in it, kinda. Okay, cool, cool. But did you know that it has wizards and sorcerers and magi in it? You're defending yourself, you coward, huh? All right, take this. The Raven is the story of Erasmus Craven, played by Vincent himself, 
mourning his wife Lenore when perchance he gets visited by a transmogrified raven. Shall I ever hold again that radiant maiden whom the angels call Lenore? How the hell should I know? Who, with the aid of Dr. Craven, gets reverted back to his human form and attempts vengeance on he who hath so wronged him. This profanation must be ended. But th then you're coming with me? Yes, I must go with you. For the sake of Lenore's tormented soul. And don't forget my magical equipment. No. Brimming with colorful moments, jokes, gags, and some pretty great scenery and costumes, 1963's The Raven is a must-see for fans of slingers of ancient magic, wholesome grim humor, and gothic scenery that will just charm the pants off of you. You're going to need something to protect you from the cold. No, I meant clothes. Oh. Oh, f***ing hell. One last Corman picture. F last one, for real this time. I f***ing swear it. The Haunted Palace, which is not really a Poe story, but is part of the Poe cycle of stories, that has a little bit of Poe inspiration from the titular poem, is actually a Lovecraft movie. The film is based mainly on an H.P. Lovecraft story, the case of Charles Dexter Ward, with smatterings of an Edgar Allan Poe poem entitled The Haunted Palace, added in for ghoulish spice. The Haunted Palace is what I feel is one of Price's most sinister roles, playing the part of both Charles Dexter Ward and his evil warlock ancestor. <laughs> Have you anything to say, Warlock? Only this. As surely as the village of Arkham has risen up against me, so shall I rise from the dead against the village of Arkham. Price brings a dark presence to the role that is unlike any other within the Poe cycle, because, again, not even actually a Poe film. Dealing with vengeance, curses, possession, and Lovecraftian terrors beyond our imagination. And hey, it even features the Necronomicon. Have you not gorged yourself enough on revenge? You do not know the extent of my appetite, Simon. I'll not have my fill of revenge until this village is a graveyard. Our next movie is a poignant choice, I must admit. Vincent Price's last theatrical appearance, Edward Scissorhands. Those are your hands? Those are your hands. A film where Price has the small, yet extremely memorable role as the inventor who brought Edward to life. Mm, yes, boring. Let us switch to... Uh some poetry. A dark suburban fairy tale that has notes of Frankensteinian birth and splashes of gothic Pinocchioisms. Price comes forth as kindly, creative, witty, charming, and even lonely in this gothic fantasy film. It's a, it's a wonderful kind of comic, but very serious idea because it is, it is a fairy tale. It's a fairy tale with a moral. Uh, all fairy tales have morals, that's why they were written, to teach us something. It's a beautiful story, it really is a beautiful story. An Evening with Edgar Allan Poe, a series of stage performances with Price reciting four of Poe's most loved tales of terror. I threw myself passionately back in the, in the window seat and, and for some moments I buried my face in my hand. Here Vincent truly is in his element. But to these words I hearkened in vain for a reply. I grew impatient. I, I called aloud, Fortunato, Fortunato. Having started his acting career on stage, it is no surprise that these performances are absolutely spellbinding and breathtaking. Price himself being a fan of Poe's work means that we aren't simply getting a phoned-in performance. Gah! 
God, what could I do? I foamed, I raved, I swore. I swung the chair upon which I had been sitting, grated it upon the boards. An Evening with Edgar Allan Poe contains the four stories, The Telltale Heart, The Sphinx, The Cask of Amontillado, and The Pit and the Pendulum. Death, I screamed! Any death but that of the pit! Fool! Might I not have known that enter the pit was the object of the burning iron to urge me? A truly remarkable treat for both the eyes and the ears. Dissemble no more! I admit the deed! Tear up the planks! Here! It is the beating of his hideous heart! And what are the odds of me having done recordings of two of these myself? <laughs> First of all, I dismembered the corpse. I cut off the head, and the arms, and the legs. For the love of God, Montresor! Yes, I said, for the love of God. And there you have it, what I consider to be the essential Vincent Price starter kit. And believe you me, this was a difficult one to put together. But remember, there are loads of classic Price films for you to enjoy after this. Dr. Fibes, Tingler, the Fly, more Corman Poe pictures, Dragonwick, Witchfinder General, etc., etc., etc. There are many. And that's just movies. I mean, Vincent Price was even on The Muppets. Hey, hey, Vincent, I really thank you for coming on the show tonight, and so do all the Muppet monsters. Well, thank you, Kermit. I never met a monster I didn't like. So why not sit back, dim your lights, Embrace your inner darkness and get to watching some of Price's greatest work. As for me, I have been your host, Be Normal. May your libraries be ever cobwebbed and your familial tombs forever cursed. And remember, I will spook to you again soon. <laughs>